This episode is brought to you by Roborock. No matter if you're a vegan or a carnivore, you have to know about the huge impact our foods have on the environment. While many are going the vegan route to reduce their impact, do we really need to give up on burgers, steaks, and fried chicken for good? Maybe not if a more eco-friendly entree makes it to our menu. How does lab-grown meat sound to you? It may be making its way to your plate sooner than you think. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. Back in medieval times, meat banquets were an exclusive meetup of the day for the aristocrats, while the closest a peasant could get to sheep was counting them as he or she fell asleep. In fact, meat-based diets didn't become accessible until about 100 years ago, when railroads and refrigeration beefed up and allowed meat packers to go mainstream. Between 1961 and 2007, the consumption of meat doubled worldwide. The rising demand fleshed out small-scale livestock producers into meat-churning beasts like Tyson or JBS. While this meat feast topped up the dinner plates of a wider population over the past few decades, the planet is counting the cost of what's now an impactful obsession. So what if you still want to enjoy a roast turkey on Thanksgiving Day without feeling guilty for the planet? Or for the turkey? You could go for a plant-based meat with Beyond Meat and Impossible on the forefront of the oxymoronic vegan meat world. Thanks to a number of partners and investors, both companies are taking root all over the market, which was $1.4 billion in 2020, and is expected to grow to $13.8 billion by 2027. Founded in 2009, Beyond Meat already had 6,000 stores across the U.S. five years later. Just over the last year, the company's stock rose by over 65%, and their revenues are expected to triple by 2023. Impossible seems to be following a similar sizzling trend. Launched in 2016, their burger is now a menu staple of big names like Walmart and Burger King. The company had a pivotal role in accomplishing a Mission Impossible, believe it or not. The sales of plant-based meat dwarfed those of the animal-based one over the last couple of years. Impossible burgers have become a staple in my house. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. But do we actually have to give up meat? And I mean real meat. Before I get to that, I'd like to take a moment to talk about another cool piece of technology, something you can put to use while you're grilling up that tasty lab-grown meat burger. While you're cooking, the Roborock S7 can be mopping up the kitchen. I've been really impressed with the S7 robot vacuum, which is also an intelligent mop. When it's mopping the floor, it's scrubbing it 3,000 times per minute. The thing that's impressed me the most is how it uses ultrasonic sound to recognize carpet versus a hard surface, so it automatically lifts the mop. The S7 has an all-new rubber brush, which is more durable, quieter, and avoids getting tangled up with hair. But the coolest tech, for me anyway, is the LiDAR mapping system. It creates a very accurate map of your house and each room, even across levels. This makes it super easy to set no-go zones in the app so you don't have to worry about knocking over a dog bowl full of water. If you're interested in getting the Roborock S7, which I've been very impressed with, check out the link in the description. Thanks to Roborock and to all of you for supporting the channel. But do we actually have to give up meat? And I mean real meat? Cultivated meat, which is meat that's grown in a lab, might become a cash cow and save our carnivore cravings with a smaller environmental impact. In fact, there could be a growing appetite for it in the future. The industry could be worth up to $25 billion by 2030. Also compared to the first prototype developed a decade ago, companies have cut lab-grown meat production costs by nearly 100%. Switching from raising methane-burping animals in never-ending fields to growing animal-free meat in a relatively small facility would be a huge improvement from an environmental standpoint. But would an engineered burger taste like a traditional one? And what about the health implications? And with an ever-increasing population, will this new food stream manage to feed the world meat fanatics? Sounds like we've got a meaty topic to cover here. The prime cuts of cultured meat were first served in a petri dish about 20 years ago. The lab meat grew out of university research with the proof of taste happening in 2013, when Mark Post, a professor at Maastricht University, created the first cell-based burger. His innovative treat was cooked and tasted during a press conference, kind of like an off-brand episode of MasterChef. And since then, startups followed up on the main course, supported by hungry private investors. Upside Foods was one of the pioneers in the cultured meat banquet, with one of the world's first lab-grown meatballs launched in 2016. And over the last few years, more ventures have jumped onto the fake meat-loaded bandwagon. So how do you grow meat in a lab? Well, basically you need three key ingredients. Animal stem cells, a protein-based feed, also known as a growth medium, and a bioreactor, which is just a device where you grow the cells. The cells are generally taken out of the animal through a biopsy under anesthesia. 
and brewing inside the feed solution, they'll develop into muscle and tissues and will reach an optimal density. At this stage, you get rid of most of the broth using a centrifuge. The harvested cells are then mixed with other additives to adjust the texture before being distributed for consumption. Now, I don't know about you, but that does not sound mouthwatering <laughs> at all. <laughs> but how does it taste? According to the volunteers taking part in an Israeli research project, it's pretty much the same as normal meat. The study authors designed a soy-based 3D scaffold to grow bovine cells on rather than in a reactor. They then fed volunteers with their innovative recipe. Apparently after cooking it, the artificial beef smelled and tasted just like the animal-based one. But is eating lab-made burgers safe? Growing meat in a controlled environment would allow tailoring its fat content. That means omega-3 fatty acids rather than saturated ones. We could make healthier and tastier meat. Some people have concerns that these Breaking Bad-like cooking experiments might introduce less desirable ingredients into our food. Yet we do know that industrial meat producers already stuff their animals with antibiotics. In the US, for instance, 80% of antibiotics are used to promote animal growth and prevent infections. So why is that bad for us? Because the more antibiotics that we feed to animals, the more resistant the bacteria inside them will become. Not to mention that the livestock can carry viruses. So if you keep spreading livestock farms around the world, Diseases are more likely to spread, leading to new pandemics. Something I think we can all agree on that we should avoid. On the other hand, companies like Multus Media are making cultivated meat without using any antibiotics in a sterile environment, free from animal waste contamination too. And it's not just healthier and safer. They also claim their creation to be cheaper and more sustainable than traditional farmed meat. The biotech startup focused on driving down the growth medium costs, which accounts for about 80% of the cultured meat manufacturing budget. Multus Media came up with an innovative solution to make the cell's nutrients more affordable. Leveraging machine learning, they've developed an optimized, animal-free, protein-rich solution to feed the animal cells, which will turn into final meaty products. This novel data-driven approach makes these nutrients less expensive and more ethical than industrial standards, which is blood serum taken from pregnant cows. Now, besides consuming less land and water, their process emits 87% less emissions than conventional production. A life cycle assessment performed on cultivated meat seems to back up these eco perks. The study found that making 1,000 kilograms of slaughter-free meat saves up to 45% in energy, reduces 96% in emissions, and requires 99% less land and 96% less water compared to farmed meat. Another benefit of Multus Media's technology is scalability. Using existing industrial plants from brewing and biopharmaceutical industries, Multus Media is confident that they can meet commercial demand in the near future. So who's leading in this animal-free meat race? Mosa Meat, Upside Foods, and Ala Farms seem to be the companies taking the biggest slices of the fake meat pie. Mosa Meat started off with a prime cut back in 2013, which was a burger for a mere 250,000 euros. For that amount of money, you could go to space and Virgin Galactic instead. But fast forward to today, and now they can produce their pseudo beef patty for a much leaner nine euros. The Dutch company is planning to launch a small scale commercial reactor in the next few years. With similar tech to Mosa Meat, Upside Foods is making chicken nuggets and beef meatballs. Funded by Bill Gates and the meat industry giant Tyson Foods, the California-based startup might beat everyone else. Unlike the first two, Olive Farms incorporates a plant-based 3D matrix, which is a scaffolding, within their bioreactors where they grow the animal cells. Sound familiar? It's because it is. The company co-authored the Israeli study that I mentioned earlier. Their technology is based on tissue regeneration, which is what happens naturally in our bodies whenever our tissues repair themselves. The company's technique is called cellular agriculture. In fact, it's very similar to how hydroponic lettuce grows directly from its seeds. This innovative approach allows them to create more complex structures like a steak and transfer it from a petri dish to your plate in four weeks. Still, they won't scale up the supply chain for another four years. Besides bioreactors and scaffolding, you could also see your meat coming out of a printer. BioNuggets are a thing since KFC partnered with a Russian 3D bioprinting lab. The BioMeat recipe? A mix of chicken cells and plant-based ingredients. And hold on to your lunch because this might not sit right with you. It's an extrusion-based bioprint, very similar to the one used for making plastic. The machine will print alternating layers of chicken cells and veggies on a 3D support. We're getting awfully close to Star Trek replicators at this point. But the animal-free menu is much wider than you might think. Companies like Eat Just are aiming for the beefy stars. They started with chicken nuggets, but the San Francisco-based firm has now captured the cells of the prestigious Toriyama cows to develop a slaughter-free version of the Japanese Wagyu beef. Partnering with the Iwano Food Group, they'll distribute and sell the fleshy fruits of their agricultural labor worldwide. 
But what if chickens and cows kind of bore you and you're looking for something a little wilder? Keep your eye on Vow. The Australian company is tapping into the 99.8% of animals which are not used for food production. Exploring these new wide avenues, their labs are trying to replicate meat from unconventional animals like kangaroos, alpacas, zebras, and yaks. All of that still without spilling any of their blood. After taking a pinch of their cells, they'll create a wild treat in about six weeks. Now, I'm a lifelong meat eater to my vegetarian wife's dismay. And if you're like me, your mouth is already watering wanting to try this. But when will the animal free meat wave surf the mainstream counter? The global consultancy AT Kearney is predicting most of the meat that we eat will no longer involve killing animals by 2040. That seems pretty optimistic to me, but time will tell. The authors also said that cultured meat will be more popular than its fully vegan competitor as it better reproduces the taste and texture of farmed meat. Imagine that perfect Wagyu steak replicated identically over and over. You'd never have to worry about a bad cut of steak again. Greener, safer, and animal friendly. It sounds perfect, right? But is there anything lurking behind the lab-grown meat counter? As I already mentioned, this technology is still not ready to deliver clean meat on a commercial scale. Also, this is probably the most important thing. As of today, cultured meat has been approved for sale by only one regulatory authority, Singapore. Since last year, a Singaporean restaurant has been serving Eat Just's cruelty-free chicken bites. Also, while the product is currently much more expensive than what you can typically grab in KFC, it should become cheaper once the company has scaled up its lab production. It's the same challenge for all new technologies, going from lab to commercial scale. So when will clean meat become affordable? At the moment, the Israeli startup Future Meat put the lowest price tag on a piece of lab-grown meat. The company sliced in half their chicken breast production cost in a few months, going down to $4 for just over 100 grams. Gathering information on technology advancements from startups in the field, CE Delft recently estimated that lab meat will become competitive on the market by 2030. Other than technology limitations and costs, swaying consumers' choice could be another big challenge. A recent survey, including 1,800 people in the US, showed that 72% of them still prefer farmed meat to cultured and plant-based alternatives. While animal-based meat has been a traditional staple for decades, it's an inefficient luxury. Cultured meat could be a feast for our society, preventing both world hunger and climate change. It's a win-win, with a whole bunch of caveats. Although it's still in an early stage, lab meat technology has grown rapidly over the last 20 years, and it might be on our dinner plates sooner than we think. And if and when I'm able to get my hands on some, I'm gonna go visit a friend of mine, Al, from the YouTube channel Eat More Vegans to challenge him to cook something tasty up. Now, would you wanna eat lab-grown meat? Jump in the comments and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I have linked to right here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you think I've earned it. And as always, thanks to all of my patrons. Joining my patron membership really helps to support the production of every single video. You also get access to each video early without ads, and I hold monthly Zoom calls for higher level members and producers. There's a private Discord group, and you can help influence what topics get covered. Go over to patreon.com slash Matt Farrell to learn more. I've also got that link in the description. And even if you aren't a patron, you're still doing something absolutely awesome, watching. Thanks so much, I'll see you in the next one.